Oxidative cleavage using ozonolysis. We can snip across the double bond of an alkene. If we treat an alkene, first with ozone, O3, and second with dimethyl sulfide, DMS, we can snip across the double bond. So where the double bond was, you end up with carbonyls, two fragments that each have a carbonyl. This carbon here is this carbon here. This carbon on this side is this carbon. Essentially what we're doing is we're inserting an oxygen molecule into that pi bond. and then it splits. So given an alkene treated with ozone followed by DMS, you want to determine the products. The easiest way to do that is to redraw the alkene elongating the double bond. So here I've redrawn the substrate with the double bond elongated. The next thing you want to do is erase the center of the bond the center of that double bond to make room for our two oxygen atoms. So here's the molecule with the center of that double bond erased. The next thing we're going to do is insert an oxygen atom into each spot where we erased so that we now have a carbonyl here and here. So here are my two products and I can redraw them in a way that's less awkward. In this case, I've got two aldehydes. Because of the substitution pattern, the alkene is monosubstituted on either side. Can you predict the products of ozonolysis of these two alkenes? Go ahead and pause your video for a moment and uh, try drawing the products. Then you can restart it and see uh, if you got the same thing I did. So here are my products for the first one. You can see on the left hand side of the alkene where it's disubstituted, I got a ketone. On the right hand side of the alkene where it's monosubstituted, I got an aldehyde. Now do this one. Pause your video again. And here are my products. So you can see um, the fragments of the original alkene in the two ketones we got. This one is 2-butanone, and this one is acetone. Right, A tetrasubstituted alkene subjected to ozonolysis will give you two ketones. A trisubstituted one will give you a ketone and an aldehyde and a, di a symmetrical disubstituted one will give you two aldehydes. It's also an interesting exercise to consider uh, what kind of molecule you might have had that would give you uh, ozonolysis cleavage products. So given the cleavage product products, what was your original molecule? In other words, what is the substrate for this reaction here? Right, and we've got ozone for step one, and this is DMS, dimethyl sulfide, just two, S, two CH3 groups connected to that sulfur. 
There are multiple ways that this could be done, but try just connecting the molecule through two of the carbonyls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove those oxygens and then connect this carbon with this carbon via a pi bond, and I'm going to connect this carbon with this carbon via a pi bond. Since I've only got one molecule in the product, it's bicyclic. So now I'm going to number so I can see how many carbons I have in each ring. That's a six-membered ring. And I'm also going to number for the other one a five-membered ring. So I've drawn on the left a six-membered ring sharing a side with a five-membered ring. And that side that's being shared is highlighted there and there. So you can look at the numbering. Three and four correspond to one and two. Then let's finish numbering. So now we know where to put the pi bonds. In the six-membered ring, the pi bond is going to be between carbons 1 and 6, so here. In the five-membered ring, the pi bond is going to be between carbons 1 and 5, so it goes here. But this is just one of three possibilities. See if you can figure out another one. Here is a second possibility. See if you can draw the third on your own.